Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to create an animation blueprint and blend space to animate your character inside of Unreal Engine 5. Now this works for both the player character and an AI NPC as well. This works for any character that you want to animate. So I've already got a character and animations in my project. If you don't have that, you can watch another video linked on screen now and in the description down below where I go over how to get free characters and animations. But since you're on this video, I'm going to assume you already have that. So as you can see on screen, I've got these different animations and the character, and we're going to be putting these together so that we can control it as a player character. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we want to do first is hit control space to open up our content browser. You can see I've got all my different animations here. What I'm going to do is right click in some empty space, go to animation and create an animation blueprint. I'm going to create this on the skeleton of our character, which we want. So for me, that is brute underscore skeleton and I'll press create. Then you can name this whatever you like. I'm going to simply name it ABP for animation blueprint underscore brute as that is the name of this character. And I'll open this up straight away. In here, what we're going to do is we're going to drag out the output pose result, and we're going to add in a state machine like so. And I'm going to name this one locomotion. You can name this whatever you like. And then we'll double click this to open it up. Out of entry, we're going to drag out and add in a state. And now a state is essentially what animation you want to play when it is in this state. So what we're going to do is we're also going to use blend spaces to smoothly blend between some of the different animations which we want. So what I'm going to do is this first state is going to be idle slash walk slash run. Because going between idle walk run is all going to be based on speed. If they're not moving, they're idle. If they are moving, it'll be walking. And if they're moving faster, they'll be running. So because we're blending between those based on speed, we can have them all in one state and we'll create a blend space for them. So we'll set that up later. We'll then drag out of this state and add in another state. And this one is going to be jump start or jump up, whatever it is that you want to name it. That makes the most sense for you. But this is the beginning of our jump. We'll drag out of this and add a state again, this one being jump loop or falling loop, whatever makes sense again for you. Drag out of this, add another state with this being jump end or jump land, and then drag out of this into the idle walk run. So we are now creating a loop for the jump. Now the reason why I'm doing a loop of three separate animations for one for jumping up, one for idle, and one for landing is because if you just use one animation, you're going to need to time that perfectly with the length of the jump. So the jump will have to match the animation, whereas I want the animation to match the jump. So that is why I've done this. So you can enter into the start, that will then go into the loop, that will then go to end, and that will then go back into idle walk run. What we can do is click on the transition going from jump start to jump loop, and we're going to tick automatic rule based on sequence player in state. So if we tick that, and then do the same for jump end to idle walk run. Tick that again. What this is going to do is essentially once the animation has finished in jump start, it will automatically go to jump loop. And once the animation is finished in jump end, it will automatically go to idle walk run. Because we just want to play these animations once and then go to the next one. So that is going to work perfectly for us. We can also double click jump start a state. Go to the asset browser on the right here and then add in the animations which we want. So I've got jump start here. Now, the reason why I've got loads of different jump animations is because some of them I was using just for the preview at the beginning, so I don't have the loops here. So you can see the full jump in action in the preview. So jump start will go in here, we'll back out, go into jump loop, and then add in jumping idle in here, like so. And also with this one selected, on the right, we want to make sure that loop animation is ticked. So for as long as we are in the air, it's going to continue playing this idle jumping falling animation for as long as needed. But we'll back out of this, go into jump end state, and add in the jumping end animation here as well. So that is now perfectly set up so far for the jump start, jump loop, and jump end animations. However, we still need to do a bit more transitional rules and also set up the idle walk run. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the event graph of our animation blueprint. Out of try get pawn owner, we are going to get movement component down here like so out of the return value of the get movement component we're going to get 
velocity. So we're getting the velocity of whatever character it is that is owning this blueprint. So because we're doing it through try get pawn owner and get movement component instead of a cast, it means that we can use this same animation blueprint on any character blueprint as long as it obviously uses the correct skeleton, but it doesn't need to be for a specific blueprint. It will work for any of them. Out of velocity, we're going to get vector length, and this is essentially just converting it from velocity to speed, so from a vector to a float. Then we can right click the return value of this, promote it to a variable, and I'm gonna name this speed. So this variable here is how fast the player or the character is actually moving, and we're going to connect the execution of that into event blueprint update animation. So this is always going to be firing off to always get the speed of the character. I'm also just going to straighten up these to keep them looking nice and neat and organized. Then we're going to come out of get movement component again. And this time we're going to get is falling. And we want is falling from the nav movement up here. And then we can right click the return value of that, promote it to a variable. And I'm going to name this jumping. You can name this falling if you want. But for me, jumping makes more sense. And I'm going to connect that into the execution of speed here, like so. Then I'm going to double click it to get a root node to keep it looking nice and organized once again. And this is all we need to do for our basic animation blueprint. So we're getting the speed and we're seeing if the player or the character is jumping as well. We'll go back to our locomotion state machine here. Double click the transitional rule going from idle walk run state to jump state. And then in here, we can simply just drag in our jumping boolean and connect that into can enter result. Because if jumping is true, then we can enter the transition. If jumping is false, then we can't. Because we want to go from either walk run to jump start if the player is jumping, which means this will be true. And then we've already set up jump start to jump loop, because that will just go through once this animation has finished. Then jump loop to jump end, we want to open that transitional rule. And now we're going to get is jumping again. But this time we're going to drag out and get a not boolean. And then that will go into the result like so. So now it's if we are no longer jumping, then we can enter the transition. So you see, jump loop, once we're no longer jumping, so we've landed on the ground, we're going to play our jump end animation. And we've already set up jump end to either walk run as that is again doing it automatically once this animation has finished. So now that we have the jump fully set up, all we need to do is the idle walk run. So what we can do is double click to open this state. And so now we want to create an animation blend space. So we'll go back into our content browser, right click some empty space, go to animation, and then go to blend space. We want to create this on the same skeleton again. So this will be brute skeleton. And I'll name this ABS for animation blend space underscore brute, like so, opening that up straight away. And you can see at the bottom here, this is actually the blend space. So on the left, we have the axis settings for horizontal and vertical. We only want to focus on the horizontal for the moment as vertical is if you also want to do directional movement as well, which I'm not going to set up in this video. However, I will do that in a future video as well, as that is quite cool and nice to have set up too. But today we're just doing normal basic stuff. So we'll close vertical and just go to the horizontal axis. I'm going to name this one speed like so. The minimum value will be zero as that is when the player isn't moving. And the maximum value wants to be the maximum speed the player can go. So for me, let's just say that is going to be 600. I might come back and change that later on because I've not set up sprinting yet in my character blueprint. So I'm not sure what speed I want. And reason for that as well as why I'm doing it on video instead of beforehand is because I also want to show you how easy it is to come back and make changes to this afterwards if you want. Because you might decide that actually you want to change your running speed later on down the line. I'll show you how easy that is to do. And now grid divisions you don't need to mess with if you don't want. But I'm going to set it just simply to 2 because I don't need as many since I'm only using three different animations. And I'm also going to take snap to grid as well. Then the smoothing time here is the time it takes to interplay between the different animations. So I'm going to set this up as 0.5. You can change this to whatever you want. The higher the number, the longer it's going to take as this is in seconds. So the smoother it will be, the lower it is, the more snappy it will be. So I think 0.5 is pretty good, but this will also depend on your animations as well. If you think it's taken too long to put to blend between them, lower this value. If you think it looks too bad and it's snapping, increase the value. Now that we have the axis settings set up, we can simply drag and drop our animations on here. So let's start with idle, drag that all the way onto the left as that is the zero down here. And you can see we now have this idle animation. 
Then let's do walk slap bang in the middle. And then we'll do run all the way on the right. Now, if we hold control and move our, our mouse, you can see that it's going to be blending between the animations based on speed. So we're essentially changing the speed so you can preview what animation is going to be played as it's doing it. And if we go over to the right here, you can see we have the walking as well. And then if we go all the way over to the right, you see we have run. So you can see how it's changing and blending between these different animations based on the speed value. So this is going to work perfectly. This looks very good blending between these animations. So let's now save this, go back into our animation blueprint. And you can see we now have ABS Brute here, which we can drag and drop into here. Drag that into the result. And you can see we have speed and non. Non, we don't need to worry about because again, that's just the other axis. If you want only one, what you can do is right click, go to animation, and then go to legacy and create a blend space 1D. That will only have one axis if that's what you wanted to do. However, I'm leaving it as this normal blend space here as I may come back and edit this later on down the line. So I think it's fine doing it like this. But if you know you're only going to want one axis, you can do a one blend space 1D instead. But if you've already set it up like this, it doesn't matter. So what we can do now is you can see we have speed input here. And earlier we made this speed variable. So we're going to drag and drop that and connect it in there. And now based on the player speed or the character speed, it will change what animation is playing and it will smoothly blend between them based on their current speed as we just previewed. So now if you look in the top left here where our character is, we are in a T-pose. If I hit compile, you can see we are now in an idle animation because we can see here it is getting the speed and it's jumping. But obviously since it's not going to be able to get any speed, it will be zero. So it's putting zero into here, which is just idle. So what we can do is minimize this and we can see if this is working. So let's open up our character blueprint and test this out. So let's go to third person, blueprints, BP third person character. I'll go to viewport, select the mesh, and I'm going to set the mesh to be my brute character, which I have. And then I'm going to set the animation blueprint to use my ABP brute that we created here. And you can see perfectly that is using that idle animation. Now what I'm going to do is quickly set up a sprint as well. So I'm going to do this just very rough purely for testing purposes. So I'm not going to be using the proper enhanced input actions. I'm just going to be doing left shift like so. And then I'm going to get the character movement out of this. I will set max walk speed, go into pressed and sprinting. We set to 600 and then we'll go back down here into released and walking I set as 300. Now I'm also going to have the character movement selected, search max walk speed, and set our default walk speeds to 300 like so. So again, that is just a very quick rough sprinting mechanic we've set up. We'll compile, minimize this, and hit play. And you can see we now have this character with our nice idle animation. And if we start walking, it's going to play that walk animation. But you can see it's maybe taking a bit too long to blend into it. And if we were to run, you can see it is playing the run animation but we're running a little bit too fast for the animation. But again, if we then stop sprinting, it will go back to walk. However, again, the walk isn't working perfectly. So let's have a look as to why that is going to be happening. So if we go back into our blend space, we can see that the walk is at 300. What I might do is delete these animations, go into our vertical axis, set that to two grid divisions, and then snap to grid on there as well. And then if I put these back in, we'll see if this works any better. So we can preview it. We're going to idle. We're going to walk. We're going to run. We'll save this. Minimize it. Hit play. Idle. Walk. Run. See, there you go. That worked a lot better. I think the issue was is, is I just needed to make sure it was snapping to the grid perfectly. So there you go. That is a quick way to fix that issue. But if you were doing blend space 1D, you wouldn't have had that problem. So now let's customize it as again, I think we're walking and running a bit too fast for these animations. So what you could do is speed up the animations, but I quite like them. So I'm going to actually slow down the player. So that's 300 and 600. So 300 walking, 600 running. Let's actually modify this slightly. So let's go into our character and just half these. So let's say 300 for running, 150 for walking. And I'll set the default value up here as well. Sorry, I put that into the wrong one. Let's change it into this one here. Max walk speed, not walk speed crouched. We'll compile that. And then in our blend space, I'm going to delete the walk and the run. 
And the reason why I'm doing that is because if you keep them there and then lower the maximum value, they'll be off screen and it will give you a load of errors because they're still technically there, but they can't be used. So we'll delete them first. And then I'll set the maximum value to 300 as that is what we've just done. And then we'll need to increase the grid divisions because it's loaded. It. So let's put it back to two. And then I'll add in the walk and run again, like so. We'll save that and then we'll hit play to see what this looks like. Now, if we start walking, you can see we're walking a lot slower. And I think that actually matches the speed a lot nicer. That is actually perfect speed. And then if we just start running, you see again, that is also a lot nicer. So I think that matches the animations a lot better. Now, you might think this is too slow, but I think that's also kind of the point of this big character. He's a big brute warrior character. He's going to be pretty slow. So I think this looks very, very good. But with that, I think that'll be it for this video. As we've done everything we've wanted to do, what we've done is we've set it up so we can animate our character. So we have this nice idle animation. We have our walk and we have our run. And I've also showed you how you can come back and edit them afterwards as well if you make any changes or if you make any mistakes or anything along those lines. But we've essentially animated our character with idle, walk, and run. And again, I think this looks pretty good. Oh, and actually, sorry, I completely forgot and just remembered now the jump as well. So let's test that out. You can jump up and land perfectly like so. And you see, because I've also set it up in three separate parts, if I were to jump off this, we're going to be in the air a lot longer, but you'll see that the animation isn't going to loop from the start and land again. It will play just the idle perfectly like so. So we can jump for any period of time and it will work perfectly. So I almost completely forgot to cover that. But there we go. You can see all of our animations work perfectly like so. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel out a lot. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.